We'll come to an example on how to use an integrating factor to form an exact differential equation. We want to solve the differential equation dx minus e to the power of negative x minus y dy equals zero. Notice how the given differential equation does fit the form of an exact differential equation. However, it's only exact if the partial of m with respect to y equals the partial of n with respect to x. Let's begin by verifying the given differential equation is not exact. Notice m is equal to one and n is equal to, be careful here because of the subtraction, it's negative e to the power of negative x minus y. Well, the partial of m with respect to y is equal to zero. The partial of n with respect to x is equal to the derivative of negative e to the power of negative x minus y with respect to x treating y as a constant, which gives us negative e to the negative x minus y times the derivative of negative x minus y with respect to x, which is negative one, giving us positive e to the power of negative x minus y. So we can clearly see now, this is not an exact differential equation. So now we'll see if we can find an integrating factor to form an exact differential equation. Any solution to the new differential equation is also a solution to the original differential equation. To look for an integrating factor, we first determine the partial of m with respect to y minus the partial of n with respect to x, and then we either divide by m or n. If we divide by n, then we want the function to be a function of only x, and we call that function p of x, and the integrating factor is u of x equals e to the power of the integral of p of x dx. If we divide by m, we want the quotient to be a function only of y, which we call q of y. If this is the case, then the integrating factor is u of y equals e to the power of the opposite of the integral of q of y dy. So let's first determine the partial of m with respect to y minus the partial of n with respect to x, and then we'll determine whether we should divide by m or n. So the partial of m with respect to y minus the partial of n with respect to x is just zero minus e to the power of negative x minus y or negative e to the power of negative x minus y. And because we're looking for a quotient that is a function of only x or only y, we should be able to tell we need to divide by n, which means, which means you want the result to be a function of x. Well, n is the same as the difference of the partial derivatives, which simplifies the positive one. But again, because we divided by n, we treat this constant function as a function of x or p of x. This indicates integrating factor u of x is equal to e to the power of the integral of p of x dx, or in our case, just the integral of one dx, giving us e to the x as the integrating factor. So now we go back to the original equation and multiply both sides of the equation by e to the x. This gives us e to the x dx minus e to the x times e to the power of negative x minus y dy equals zero. And now let's simplify. We have e to the x dx and then minus, here we're multiplying the base to the same and therefore we add the exponents, x plus the quantity negative x minus y is just negative y, giving us minus e to the negative y dy equals zero. And now there should be an exact differential equation. Let's verify this on the next slide. Notice in this new equation, m is equal to e to the x and n is equal to negative e to the negative y. Well, the partial of m with respect to y is equal to zero because m is a function of x and the partial of n with respect to x is also zero because n is a function of y. So because the first order partials are equal, we now know we do have an exact differential equation. And again, any solution to this differential equation is also a solution to the original differential equation. The solution is big F of x comma y equals c such that the partial of big F with respect to x equals m and the partial of big F with respect to y equals n. From here, we have a choice of integrating both sides of the first equation with respect to x or integrating both sides of the second equation with respect to y. Let's integrate both sides of the first equation with respect to x. Just remember when we integrate the partial of big F with respect to x with respect to x, we don't recover the function of y that was a part of f because when determining the partial of big F with respect to x, we treat y as a constant. So integrating both sides with respect to x 
we get big F of X comma Y equals the integral of M with respect to X, where M is E to the X, giving us E to the X not plus C, but again plus a function of Y, which we'll call A of Y. And now we use the second equation to determine A of Y. The second equation states the partial of big F with respect to Y must equal N, and the partial of big F with respect to Y is equal to the derivative of e to the x plus a of y with respect to y, treating x as a constant, which just gives us a prime of y, which must equal n, which is negative e to the negative y. And now we can determine a of y by integrating negative e to the negative y with respect to y. So a of y is equal to the integral of negative e to the negative y dy, Notice here we need to perform u substitution where u is equal to negative y, du is equal to negative one dy or negative dy. Which means in terms of u, we just have the integral of e to the u du, and therefore a of y is equal to e to the negative y. So now we know the potential function big F of x comma y is equal to e to the x, plus a of y, but a of y is e to the negative y, giving us plus e to the negative y, and therefore the implicit form of the general solution is e to the x plus e to the negative y equals c. Let's go ahead and solve for y. We subtract e to the x on both sides, which gives us e to the negative y equals c minus e to the x. Next, we'll take the natural log of both sides of the equation. Applying our log properties on the left, natural log of e to the negative y is equal to negative y times natural log e. Natural log e is one, giving us negative y equals natural log of the quantity c minus e to the x. Multiplying both sides by negative one, we have y equals negative natural log of the quantity c minus e to the x as our general solution. I hope you found this helpful.